So today we'll be talking about very significant figures, or siggy figgies, for sure. I mean, uh, sig figs. So. Uncertainty for this one. Now, during uncertainty, I was actually lying to you. You remember that bench I measured for you? 240 centimeters? Well, I actually made an intentional mistake over there. It wasn't 240 centimeters. And I gave you 24 hours to find it. This lesson, I'm going to fix my intentional mistake, and you'll get that answer key. Alright. So, go over to my mistake. Two centimeters was wrong. So, what was right? Give you 24 hours to figure it out. And well, which one is right? Shut up, you! We don't need you around. But anyways, which one was the right measurement? Hint, hint, uh, one of them is already wrong. I already narrowed the chances down to 33.333. Okay, okay, I'm not a calculator. Not going to infinitely input that much crap. But anyways, what's the length of that bet? Well, is it A? No. Is it B? Also no. Is it C? Also no. But is it D? Yes, yes, and yes. Now, if you're not the, if vision is not your strongest suit, then you might be asking, what's the difference between A and D? Well, it's this little dot right over here. And what does that thought mean? Well, that's exactly what we're going to explore today. So, today we will be looking at Siggy Fig. I mean, Sig Fig. Two, three, Sig Figs. All right. Now, what's the second rule? That you had, well, six million. Uh, one. I think that's six million. But anyways, how many sig figs does this have? Just one. Why? Well, because these trailing zeros, we don't know what they are. This is just an estimate. This well, oh, to a hundred thousandth place could be something other than zero. We can't assume. And thus, we only know one reliable digit, or only one digit actually contributes to our measurement. And so, there's only one sig fig. I don't know why I wrote the plural S. Sorry, the noggin isn't working. Anyways, number three. Leading zeros are not sig figs either. Wait, what did I put that? Aren't sig figs. Sig Figs. Oh, geez. Oh, nice. All right. Leading zeros aren't sig figs. For example, 0 0.67. Oh, well, actually, let's be more creative and put 65. So, how many sig figs does this have? This very, very creative number that isn't just a sequence of two numbers have. Well, it would only have two. Why? Well, one, two. This, the leading zero, and not a sig fig, because we don't know what that one's place could be. So there were only two sig figs, six and five. Number four, and this is kind of like a subset of rule two and three, and this is kind of an exception, but trapped zeros. Count is sig figs. So, for example, you have, well, well <clears throat> this actually is the thing that covers that first choice at the beginning. Now, your D is correct because of this rule. So, for example, 606 or error 404 uh, may be nostalgic to you uh, people who were born in the 90s and always saw windows in the internet crashing. But anyways, 
these zeros in the middle that are sandwiched, we know what their value is. They're assured because, first of all, there's something that's preventing them from being a trailing zero, and there's another thing preventing them from being a leading zero. And uh, thus, by convention, this must be the known value of, well, our tens place. Our tens place must be zero if the zero number is sandwiched between two things. So, likewise, let's say that we weren't sandwiched by a number, but by a decimal point. Da -na -na. So, let's say we have 70. 70 by itself just has one trailing zero, meaning that doesn't contribute to the measurement. But, remember that thing that made the entire difference between life and death. I mean, not life and death, just correct and wrong measurement. Was the decimal point. That decimal point is just like a phantom number. It's like a ghost number. It doesn't actually well, do anything for the measurement, but it's something that sandwiches the zero. Oh my freaking god, why did I switch the highlighter? It's something that sandwiches the zero and doesn't allow it to be a trailing zero either. So this stops the zero from being a trailing zero and gives it some value. If we put this, but no number after it, we know that our tenth place, which is the number directly after it, it left the ambiguous. But we know for sure that the ones place is zero. That's what made the difference between, well, wrong and correct measurement. The thing is, in addition, let's say that you have six. Sure! Sorry, he's just being a little wobbly right now. All right, so 6.65. And then, let's say you add that to 5.5. Now, if you were in the perfect world of pure math, you would probably just say, hey, I think this is 12.15 because I'm smart. But you're wrong because this only has two sig figs, while this has three. So the final answer must only have two, uh, two sig figs. See, now you're thinking like a smart man, mathematician. And so this can't be 12.15, but it's 12, dot. So subtraction, 0.5. Now the smart mathematicians out there might be saying again, 5.05, <gasps> but wrong, wrong. That's all wrong. How is it wrong? Well, that's because 2.5 only has two sig figs, while 7.55 has three. There could be anything lying beyond that five. So that means that the final answer would not be 5.05, as the smarty mathematicians would say, but rather it would be rounding up to 5.1. One, two, six, six. Multiplication, 32 times 25 is 800. So now, 3.2 times 2.5. All the smarty math men out here would say again, I ate, I ate this, this problem. I tried to make a joke with eight. But anyways, it would say eight, eight, eight. But eight is wrong. Why? Well, you see, one sig fig, uh, I mean two sig figs on this one, two sig figs on this one, but why one sig fig on this one? Hmm, we're not dividing sig figs, are we? So, we must have two sig figs in our answer. And that means the mathy mathy sporty men didn't add something this time. They missed something. So, the answer is actually 8.0, at least in physics. So now, finally, we got to division. A, 0.7, that's wrong. Lazy O's, B, 0.67, and then 0.66666666. Well, in the world of mathy, mathy, this would be right because two and three are perfect, but they're wrong. This was a seamless plug. But anyways, 0.67, finally, B, that's correct. Because remember, this leading zero, not a factor, not a siggy figgy. So that means that there's only two sig figs 
when there must be two. And well, the so answer. Oh, geez, I'm really getting tired. Sorry. Well, anyways, <sighs> let's go to exponent. See. So with exponent, let's say you have five point four scientific notations together. They should give you an answer with two sticky figures. So, sorry folks, so 5.4 times 10 to the 3 plus 2.1 times 10 to the 4th. A normal mathematician would put it as, I am smart. 0.54 times 10 to the 4th plus 2.1 times 10 to the 4th. And that's another mathematician offended. Moving on. So, that gives us, well, um, 2.64 times 10 to the 4th. But that's only in the magical, perfect world of mathematics. The cameraman looks literally dead inside. But anyways, what about in the non-perfect, non-surreal world of physics? Well, in the non-perfect, non-surreal world of physics, we only know for sure we uh, this tenth digit. We don't know what the hundredth digit is, so why bother to include it in the measurement? So, that means that if you were actually doing it in physics, our answer would only have two sticky figures, 2.6 times 10 to the 4. So that's the real answer. What about angles? So, angles are the final terror here. Have any decimal points or anything. So, you why bother including more than two sig figs? So, all the calculators would give you disk givers, but that's only because they're designed for math. If you were doing physics, you would just use 0.87 when you're using realistic sig figs. All right. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.